consciousness and its capacity to, to be aware and its capacity to communicate. It's something like that. And there's an idea underneath that, which is that being, especially from a phenomenological perspective, so the being that is experienced cannot exist without consciousness. It's like consciousness shines a light on things to bring it into being. Because without consciousness, what is there? No one experiences anything. It's like, is there, any, is there anything when no one experiences anything? That's the question. And the answer that this book is presenting is that, no, you have to think about consciousness as a constituent element of reality. It's something that's necessary for reality itself to exist. So here's a really cool thing. Let's say you go outside at night and you look up and you see a star and like, so a photon from that star enters your eye. And maybe that photon has been cruising along for like 30 million years. Do you know that that photon would not have been emitted from that star at that time if your eye wasn't there at that time to receive it? And Wheeler is also the physicist who developed the notion of it from bit. And he believes that the world is best construed as a the potential of the world is best construed as a place of information. It's something like latent information. And that what consciousness does is transform the latent in information into something like concrete reality. And he doesn't mean that metaphorically. And one of the cases that he makes in that regard is this story that I just told you, is that the photon couldn't have leapt from where it was unless it had a place to go. Hello. Reality does not exist until it is measured. This has been tested with a large number of particles and even from a clinical psychologist's perspective, reality does not exist without conscious awareness of that reality. The way you feel about yourself, the things you believe, the things you deem important, your mind will filter out everything unimportant and just focus on the variables that reinforce your narratives. But intriguingly enough, if Reality does not exist until it is measured. The act of having belief structures will quite literally manifest reality by focusing your awareness on those variables, which in turn, as your conscious awareness, measure them through your senses. In this way, you are quite literally creating your own reality based upon how you feel about yourself and what you think, believe. What is the defining principle of the law of attraction? You attract what you are, what you believe, what you feel about yourself. That is what you will manifest, you will attract. Don't all of these understandings appear to be pointing in the same direction? This is why narcissists have a tendency of wreaking a very high initial reward in our society. Their belief structures, which in turn rendering that portion of reality into existence, the narcissist focusing on the variables that reinforce their ego, all the while ignoring any outside noise or truth that may conflict with that ego, their selective bias that in turn helps them attain vastly, but only in the short term. Narcissists have a tendency of moving because people eventually figure them out. You can't be untethered from truth for too long, for to the narcissist's dismay, truth always has time on its side. It alludes to another core principle to the nature of our reality, that there are consistent rules to this game, laws, physics, and if you ignore their power, it will always come back one way or another. With this we understand, even though we create reality by measuring it, measuring it through our senses, even though our belief structures navigate our attention, thus the conscious awareness that measures, despite all of the unknown, we can still discern that there is a cause and effect in play for any long-term vision to come into fruition. There must be a tangible path for us to follow, a path that is consistent to the laws of this game. And so, truly, you do create your own reality on both a subjective and objective sense, but that reality always has to make sense, whether it is ascending to a higher paradigm or perhaps even letting yourself descend. There always has to be a cause and effect as to why. That is the distinction we often ignore. Nothing is handed to the unworthy, which makes all of this paradoxical in a sense. After all, if the origin of reality is mind, if that is a strong analogy to the best of our current understanding, then why can you not bend the laws with yours, your mind? 
when you understand, you realize that you cannot wish for the hammer to move. You must wield it yourself, not just by believing, but by also testing that faith with the humbleness of execution. The yin and the yang, the paradox, it is truly quite intriguing because you begin to realize where your power resides.